Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. We have a DraftKings showdown on Thursday night football between the New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. There's a couple of injuries that we need to note, and I think that there's, I don't want to say a mistake in pricing, but I feel like based on game log watching and everything else that uh, there's something that seems out of whack. So it's going to be interesting to kind of break this down. We're going to go over everything that we normally do in terms of our showdown perspective, how we build the lineups, who we're looking at and why, uh, and then taking a look at the fantasy labs lineup builder in case, look, if you don't have the money to enter the big, uh, 15, 20, $11 tournament, I get that. But like they do have mini max games on both FanDuel and DraftKings for these showdowns, uh, and our, Community has done quite well in them. So if you wanted to test yourself out as a mass multi-entry player and learn how to manage those lineups in Showdown, you can take the rules uh, that I show you guys every week, tweak them to your liking, uh, and put your 150 lineups in those mini max games and give yourself a chance at really maximizing your outcome, winning like 500, 1,000, or $5,000 uh, for a very minimal entry fee. So it's the best way to find out if you are the next great MME player go check out Fantasy Labs at smizzle.tv slash labs with an uppercase L. Link is down below in the description. So thank you guys for watching the video. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you ring the notifications bell and leave me a reply down below, letting me know if you have ever tried mass multi-entering or if you are just a hand builder who plays single entry or three max. Nothing wrong with doing it either way, but I'd love to hear from you to let me know how you build your lineup. So let's hit it. He's a legend. If you haven't done so just yet, go check out all the great things that they have over at underdogfantasy.com, one of my favorite games that they have outside of best ball, uh, which is my favorite thing to do on Underdog Fantasy is great best ball drafts for NFL, for NBA, uh, and as soon as the season's over, you can start drafting. But they also have pick them for basically every sport, NFL, NBA, college football, pick them, uh, NHL, soccer, golf, esports, and MLB when MLB season is in play. So you can take player props and fantasy props that they will have, and you link them together anywhere from two, uh, three, four, or five for different payouts. Pays three times, 6X, 10X, or 20X. You got to get all of them right. Uh, you're going to pick the overs or the unders in these situations. And I think that there is a fun one that we can play. And if you're brand new, uh, I believe that they are doing, it was if on your first deposit, if you used Al Smizzle, one word, uh, on your first deposit, you got $10. I believe that they are matching your first deposit up to $100. So it's essentially a free bet when you deposit and use uh, Al Smizzle, up to $100 deposit right in your account if you deposit $100 onto Underdog Fantasy. So here's all the, the props that they have up there on the site for Thursday's game. It's Wednesday when I'm recording this video, but I got a fun one here. It's stupid, but it's fun. We're going to bet overs because they're fun, even though they're less optimal. I'm going to take Matt Ryan over 2.5 rushing yards and Mac Jones over 4.5 rushing yards for all the memes. For $10 to win 30, we're always live with this one right? What we got to hope for is that whichever team is winning, that they don't have the ball last or they're not within range because three kneel downs can take this away from us real fast. So this is going to be a sweat all the way up until there are three zeros on the clock. Very fun way to kind of look at things uh, from a different angle. Uh, and you don't have to have sports betting legal in your state to be able to do it because it's fantasy and it's props. Looking at the, the slate that we have here, I mean, total of 46, Patriots favored by three. Let's start with the Patriots, okay? So Mac Jones, the Jets picked two picks before Mac Jones went. They, they took Zach Wilson, who they are afraid to start at this point, and they're starting Joe freaking Flacco uh, over him. They could have taken Mac Jones at two. They could have taken Mac Jones at 14, uh, but instead, no. And so he looks like right now, the most equipped rookie quarterback in the league. He's not, he doesn't have the ceiling of a Fields or a Wilson if he can get it together uh, or a Trevor Lawrence or anything, but like for right now, Mac Jones is playing exceptionally well. He's doing a fantastic job. Uh, when asked to throw the ball a lot 
or when being asked to kind of game manage because they're playing from ahead. He is putting this offense in positions to win, and he's thrown multiple touchdowns in what? Four games so far and three of the last five. I don't think that he is going to be the optimal captain, but if you are going to use him in captain, and typically I limit to like 15 total percent of the two quarterbacks in the captain spot in this game, it's probably going to be lower than that. Uh, the field will overweight the captain, and the captains have won all in all showdowns. Captains that are quarterbacks have won like 15% of all showdown slates. And on a slate like this where the quarterbacks don't have a very high probability of getting you that like 40 point, 35 to 40 point night, it's way less likely that they're going to end up the captain and more than like 25% of the field is going to have either Jones or Ryan at captain. But if you're going to play Jones in the captain spot, you're going to stack him with at least two of his pass catchers. Uh, guys, guys, Jacoby Myers scored a touchdown. I'm happy for Jacoby Myers. Off the schneid, breaking the streak. Uh, not as many targets per game as he was getting earlier in the season. While Kendrick Bourne has been doing a fantastic job uh, himself. And in the absence of Jonu Smith, Hunter Henry has done a great job with five touchdowns in the last five games, getting a massive chunk of the red zone work. We are going to have to wait uh, to find out if Damian Harris uh, is is going to go. We'll know 90%, uh, 90%, 90 minutes before lock, whether it's going to be him or whether it's going to be Ramondre Stevenson leading the line. Uh, but looking at their prices, 12-9 for Stevenson and Harris at, sorry, that's at captain. 8-6 for Stevenson and 8-8 eight, eight for Harris. They've priced them kind of where they should in case one is out, then the other one's viable. Uh, but you don't have a backup situation. Now, that's a little bit of foreshadowing because Atlanta uh, is in a different spot this week. So uh, I'm interested to see how that shakes out. But to finish off this Mac Jones group, we're going to include Aguilar in that group. Not going to include any of the running backs. We'll include the kicker uh, in that spot. And anybody that you feel is going to be a viable pass catcher. And we're going to bring that back with basically everybody that's on the other side. I think that it's going to be more viable to either have whichever one is the lead back between Harris or Stevenson or one of the pass catchers, whether it's Myers. And if you have Myers, we're going to tie Mac Jones to that lineup. Uh, if you're going to have Kendrick Bourne at captain, I'm going to tie Mac Jones to that lineup because if Kendrick Bourne has two touchdowns and is the optimal captain, Mac Jones will also have had a multiple touchdown day and will probably need to be in that lineup. Now there is routes that it can go where like the optimal captain might just get there on volume alone with absolutely no touchdowns and the quarterback doesn't make it. But like the right side of the math is if a wide receiver or tight end is the captain, the quarterback is in that lineup way more often a uh, than the quarterback is not in that lineup. And also in that lineup way more often than the public is playing them uh, along with that wide receiver. So I like to be on the right side of the math. You build your lineups however it is that you want to build your lineups. I'm just going to show you the right path. Uh, taking a look at the other side, as I said, we would build, if we had Mac Jones at quarterback, we're going to build the other side. Matt Ryan, again, I don't think that there are very many paths where he is the optimal play uh, at quarterback, but if we are going to play him, we do have to monitor this uh, Cordero Patterson situation. He's a game time decision. We'll know 90 minutes before lock, whether he's going to play at the absolute latest, if he's active or if he's inactive. Worst case scenario is that he's active, but he's active. We're like, he's just out on the field just to kind of be a decoy. I don't think that the Falcons can play that game uh, and do that. I do believe that historically, Belichick has done what he can to take your favorite toy off the, you know, uh, off the table and make you beat him with, with other players and considering that they're losing weapons weekly, right? They traded away Julio Jones. They've lost Calvin Ridley to off the field personal reasons. They might not have Cordero Patterson. That leaves Kyle Pitts as the guy that he's going to shift the most of his attention to. And with Kyle Pitts lining up a lot wide and in the slot, he's not getting those advantageous matchups. Uh, against linebackers and safeties as much and it's tougher for him to beat cornerbacks because he is a a tight end and b a rookie if you look at gronk in in his prime years he did much better more expected fantasy points when he was lined up against a linebacker or a safety than he scored against a cornerback so same situation for kyle pitts added to the fact that he's a rookie albeit a tremendous uh talent massive 
player, all, ridiculous athlete, all those sorts of things. Uh, he's going to have peaks and valleys uh, as we've seen this season with three, nine, 26, 29, 10. Like it's, it's difficult for him to go off, but multiple touchdown upside for him. If they can pull it off, we're going to include basically every viable pass catcher. Uh, Gage will be in that lineup. Zacchaeus would be in that lineup. If Patterson is healthy and playing, he will t two will be in that lineup. If he's out, somebody like Tajay Sharp now pops in that lineup. Hayden Hurst, uh, also a player that you have to consider in that spot as they're going to have to look elsewhere from Kyle Pitts a little bit more and with Cordero out, that's going to free up a lot more usage as well. Uh, we will be including the kicker in that lineup. And the same rule applies. If we're going to have a captain that's a pass catcher, if you want Pitts in that spot, I'm going to tie Matt Ryan to him. If you want Patterson in that spot, I'm going to tie Ryan to him. Same thing with any of the other guys. This is a very weird showdown slate in the sense that there's not like superstars that we are going to want to play in captain it could be ugly uh and unpredictable the one thing that does look weird to me is the flex pricing of two players wayne gallman jr uh 12 6 in the captain and what was he in the flex uh nine damn it he's sitting at 8400 in the flex because oh look he's taking over the job 15 carries two targets Falcons got curb stomped last week by Dallas. And like all the starters got sat. And now Mike Davis didn't get any run because he got game scripted out of the game. And yet his price is 5,800 versus Gallman's 84. This doesn't make any sense to me. Because maybe Gallman has taken over the job. Maybe. But in reality, this is almost like if you're looking at an NBA game and you're like, wow, this guy played like 38 minutes last night. Yeah, but the game went to double overtime and somebody that was ahead of him fouled out. He didn't get a, a merit-based promotion. This seems like it could be a game script spot. Now, if Cordero Patterson is out, then I think both uh, Davis and Gallman are clearly viable, but if Patterson's in, I kind of feel like Gallman could be a trap uh, in this spot. I could be totally wrong about that, uh, and he could have taken over the job on a merit-based promotion from Mike Davis, but I just don't see that as being the case. I think that this is a situation where the starters got benched, Davis got benched, they brought in Gallman as the clear backup in mop-up duty uh, in last week's 43-3 to ridiculous game. So same thing, Matt Ryan plus two of his pass catchers. Uh, and if we're going to use him, we're going to do that. I'm going to probably include only one kicker in defense. Let's go over to Fantasy Labs and check out what we got over there. I will allow 10% left on the table in any alignments that's going to build. Uh, I do not allow a kicker or a defense to be the captain. I will not change that. If, if a kicker or a defense happens to be the optimal captain that wins that night, that's just a showdown. I'm not going to win. I'm going to keep myself on the right side of the math there. We are clearly going to build our group where we're going to have at least one and we're going to pick five players or so, four, five, six players that project to be under 25 or 20 percent. Things, guys that you just don't think people are going to play. We're going to force one of them at least into every single lineup because when we do that, it keeps our lineups a little bit differentiated from the rest of the field, which means there's going to be overlap when it comes to. I clicked something wrong. Uh, which means there's going to be overlap when it comes to showdown, right? But when you when you have that overlap, it's much better if you're going to have that overlap with five or 10 or 15 other lineups as opposed to walking across the finish line with 100 or 200 people tied with you where you win like 1,000 or 2,000. Putting that extra player in that lineup allows you that differentiation. And if you happen to win... You win way more when you win. And that's really what uh, the goal should be. So you don't have to do all that much to get different. You don't have to leave 20,000 on the table to get different. You just got to have that one different spot in your lineup. Uh, and looking at the rules, I didn't go over them with you like I do on every single lineup. Uh, pair your captain QB with at least two wide receiver, tight end, and kicker. Pair your captain QB with at least one from the opponent, offensive player, not defense or kicker. If they end up in the lineup, that's fine, but we're not going to force them. Pair the wide receiver captain with uh, exactly the quarterback from the same team. Pair the tight end with the quarterback from the same team. Limit to at most one D and kicker from the same game. You can alter this at your leisure. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Go check out the great tools that they got over at Fantasy Labs. Leave me a reply down below. Like the video. Subscribe the 
to the channel and ring the notifications bell. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.